Please welcome to the stage, doTERRA founding executive sales and marketing, Emily Wright. Now I am in today been the most amazing day ever? Did you appreciate the surprise? Yes! This is our way of saying thank you for an amazing 10 years. I think Hugh brought a pretty good thank you gift, right? Oh, wow. Every single speaker, everything this entire week has been absolutely cup filling, and I am going to leave this event so full and so determined and so committed to do more. So, we've talked a lot about dreams today. We're going to talk a little bit more about dreams. Is that okay? Yes? So, as we watch this video, you notice these children, right? They believe in the beauty of their dreams, right? They believe that they can do these amazing, wonderful things. Think of yourself as a small child between the age of three to seven. At that point in our time or in our lives, we thought we could accomplish anything. We thought we were invincible. For me, I used to watch out my window and see the Canadian geese fly, and I thought for sure, that someday I would have wings and I would fly. Well, I think I've spent enough time up in the sky that I have earned my wings, right? <laughs> and I have learned to fly. When we started doTERRA, we were our first year in, we had created a program called the U.S. Founders Club. And this was to create some excitement, some momentum to encourage people to go out and share the message and these amazing, beautiful essential oils that we had been able to discover. And as this Founders Club was filled, we gave them watches. Now, at that point in time, we were still wondering, right, are we, is the money going to make it, right? Are we going to have enough? These were $70 watches. We had to buy 25 of them, right? And some of them times two because... Some of them were married. Many of them were. That was a huge investment. So I remember going into David Sterling and saying, Dave, do you think it would be possible for us as owners to maybe get a watch too? He's like, I don't know, Emily. That's a lot of money. That's a big investment. I, I don't know that that's the right decision for us right now. I mean, we're still living off of almonds and yogurt at this point in time, right? So we had more conversations as, a, as an ownership team over the coming weeks. This was a big conversation, right? Can we get a $70 watch? It was big. And finally, Dave said, I think we need to partner with our U.S. founders and get a watch. So as we gave them their watches... I did something that my partners didn't know I had done. I engraved something on the back of each of our watches. On the back of those watches was my mantra, the way I choose to live my life. A quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So, when you think about the time that we were starting doTERRA, we had a dream to go out and find nature's most pure, most potent essential oils. We had a dream of empowering individuals and families to understand the power of essential oils and to give them natural solutions to care for their families. But there was another dream that we had. In 19... 
82, a cool phenomenon started to happen. Women began receiving more bachelor's degrees than men. In 1987, women received more master's degrees than men. Now, as we come into 2006, women are receiving more doctorate degrees than men. But only 5% of women hold CEO positions. Only 11% of women are top earners in their company. Yet, they've become even more educated than the men. There's a discrepancy here. Today, 60% of the college graduates are women. Yet, 34% of them are medical doctors, 15% of them are executive officers, and 19% of them hold seats in the US Congress. So why the discrepancy? Why do we have these women that are so excited to go out and receive these college degrees, and yet they're not receiving the same leadership positions and pay as the men are? So we looked at this. I had found myself in this same situation, right? Where I had been unappreciated and undervalued for a long time in my career. We had a vision, we had a dream of creating an opportunity that would allow women the opportunity to shine. Now, you might look at this picture and say, but you're the only woman. How can you say that? You stand there with six men and you talk about empowering women. Trust me, these six men, I don't think they could deal with any more than just this one woman, right? I promise I represent all of you. But I want you to look at this picture for just a moment right, in the early beginnings of doTERRA. And I want you to pay attention to how we're dressed, how I'm dressed. Do you recognize your own significance? Because in the moment that this photo was taken, I did not yet recognize my significance. I was dressed like my business partners were dressed. I had been raised up in a man's world. I sat on a board with three other men before doTERRA was started. And I thought in order to advance my career, in order to succeed in business, I had to act like a man. What I have discovered through doTERRA, what I have discovered through these beautiful essential oils, what I have discovered through each and every one of your hearts is that it's okay to be me. So as we started doTERRA, we started with five oils, peppermint, lemon, lavender, frankincense, and tea tree. And we took these little oils, Greg showed you the first vial that we received, the canister that came in, and we'd take syringes, and we'd fill up these tiny little 5-8 dram bottles, we'd make Avery labels and put on them, and we'd pass them out to all of our friends and family and anyone who would listen to us. As we started to do that, a lot of people mocked, a lot of people thought we were crazy and wondered what in the world we were doing. But we started to get them into the hands of some pretty powerful people. 
people who didn't know anything about essential oils, certainly didn't know anything about direct selling, but what they did know is that they wanted to find something that could help them and their families become well. We got them into the hands of a whole lot of moms. And these moms started putting oils on their family and on their children. And they started to recognize the power that essential oils had. And as they discovered this, they couldn't keep it to themselves. They started sharing what they had come to know to be true with other people, with their friends and with their family. And then another phenomenon started to happen. As they now began to build communities, one with another. These communities started to grow, started to build, and they started to find a sense of belonging. They found a voice. They realized that people wanted to hear what they had to say. And then something else happened. Many of you may not know that Rhonda Ford is watching us right now live from her hospital bed. One of the very first wellness advocates of doTERRA. So I want each and every one of you in this moment to send Rhonda Ford your love. Could you do that and let her know that we're praying for her and the fight for her life right now? We love you, Rhonda. We love you. We're praying for you. Thank you. We're family, aren't we? And these families started to grow. And these women recognized what they could accomplish, right, as they rose up as leaders, their own teams and their own communities, and they had dreams realized. They brought husbands home with them, right? And allowed dreams to become reality. You know, I have a a girl that attends my church congregation. (laughs) Hey, Pamela. It's not Pamela. (laughs) She's beautiful. But uh, she's 21 years old. She's a young mom. And, uh, and she's been asking me for some advice. And she sent me a message. And she said, I know. I know that I'm going to have your level of success. I know it. It's just around the corner. And as I was talking to her the other day, as, as she was asking me for some advice, I said, something, there's something you have to understand. The me that you see today wasn't the me when I was 21 years old. I had to go through a lot of trials. I had to go through a lot of sacrifice. I had to go through a lot of life experience, a lot of seasons to come to where I am today. And you have to be willing to go through the hard stuff in order to enjoy the fruits of those labors. And it's something that she hasn't yet come to recognize yet, right? And I look at this picture of Pamela, right? When we celebrate the beauty of the butterfly, what we have to appreciate is the journey, the process that each and every one of us are going through right now in this very moment, discovering who we are. And as we go through this process, as we come to know and recognize who we really are, who we really are, that's when we're able to let go of caring about what others think of us and truly pour our hearts into serving one another. 
in a way that brings us joy, that brings us happiness, that celebrates humanity. That's what brings us all collectively together in this spirit of service. So I'm going to share a story with you. Now, you know that usually as Emily finishes out the event, there's got to be a vulnerable story, right? Well, this is kind of an embarrassing one, but I'm going to share it with you anyway, because I think there's something in it that each and every one of us can learn from, something I'm still learning myself. So in June, just a few months ago, I was in Lake Como, Italy, one of the most beautiful places of the world, celebrating with our presidential diamonds. And Kyle Kirschbaum texted me and said, Emily, how would you and Corey like to go canyoneering with us? I'm like, oh yeah, sign me up for that, right? I mean, this is the girl that jumps out of airplanes, that jumps in piranha-infested waters. I mean, you name it, I am up for an adventure always, right? So as we're sliding down the rocks and rappelling down and doing all of these crazy, awesome things, we come to this cliff, and now it's time for us to jump. So many of the gang that was here with us jumped, and they're down in the bottom waiting for me to make my leap. Let me share with you my jump. the jump. I was terrified. I was terrified of the unknown. My fears got the best of me. I remember as we were having a conversation about doTERRA in the very early days, and we had just gone to New York to meet with an investor to see about funding the company, and they'd offered us a whole lot of money, but they wanted 51% of our dream in order to give us their money. As we came back, we had to make a decision. What are we going to do? And we decided we can't take their money. We can't take anybody's money. We had to fund it ourselves, which meant pulling the equity out of our homes, cashing out 401ks, liquidating everything we owned. And I went home to my husband that night. I said, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. We've worked so hard to get ourselves out of debt, and we were just right there almost to the finish line of paying off our home, that all other debt paid off, and we were almost free. And now we're talking about sinking ourselves deep into debt, depleting our savings, taking everything that we'd worked so hard for. And I said, I don't know if we can do it. And my husband looked at me, and he said, where is your faith? So after I failed to jump, we went to the next jump. And this time it was to go down a waterfall. And Kirsten Kirschbaum came to me and said, Emily, I'd already decided I wasn't jumping. I'm just going to repel down. You guys go ahead and jump. I have nothing to prove, right? I don't need to jump into that dark water that I have no idea what's, what's lurking below, right? And she said, Emily, 
I need you to do this for me. You are my leader, and I need to, you to show me that it's possible. Man, when she said those words to me, everything shifted. Now, we didn't get that jump on video, but here is the third jump. Could you play that, please? Oh, no, me right at the I'm still scared, but I did it, right? But I did it. I overcame my fears because Kirsten needed me to, right? So how big are your dreams? Are they big enough to scare you? I remember the day that that dream filled my heart, and I knew, I knew there was something amazing we were supposed to create. And I remember picking up that phone to call David Sterling, a man who had been a mentor to me, a man that I looked up to so much. And here I am calling him, asking him to join in this dream. Was that scary? Heck yeah, that was scary, right? But guess what? He said yes. He said yes, right? So I want you to do, me, do a favor for me right now. Gina talked to you about the power of writing down your dream. I want you to take your notebook and I want you to go to a clean page. I don't want anything on either side of your notebook. And on that notebook, I want you to write down what your dream is right now. And I want you to write it in the form as if it already happened. I am a marathon runner. I am financially free. Whatever that dream is, right? I am a silver. Whatever that dream is, write it out as if it were so. Believe it with every fiber in your being, every cell in your body. And then I want you to put a great big heart around your dream. On the back side of that paper, I want you to write down why. Why does that dream matter to you? Why is it important? What does that mean to you, to your family, to your loved ones, to those that you care about? You have to have a why that will push you through those hard times because there will be hard times. So it's holding you back, right? When we look at dreams, it's holding you back. For me, the reason I couldn't make that jump is I didn't have a why, right? I didn't care. I didn't care whether I jumped or whether I didn't. I had nothing to prove, right? But the second time and the third time that I jumped, I had a why, right? I absolutely had a why, and I was going to push through that. But what untruths do we tell ourselves? Do we say, I'm too out of shape, I'm overweight, right, to run that marathon? I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. Maybe I've got responsibilities, right? I've got to be a mom. I've got to stay here with my kids. And if I leave them, I'm not being a good mom, right? There's all sorts of things that we fill our brain with. A couple of months ago, actually, it's only been two months ago, I decided... I was going off gluten and sugar completely. Now, I've been telling myself this for quite a while, right? Almost the last year, I've been pushing towards this. And it was always, I'll start tomorrow. Let me just have this one last piece of chocolate, right? Because I really, really, really love chocolate. And I'll start tomorrow. What I was telling myself is, you're not worth it. You're not worth the hard work. Your health isn't worth it. And so finally one morning, I woke up, and I kind of took the Mel Robbins um, 
kind of conclusion with that. And I went, five, four, three, two, one. I'm doing it today. Today. And I've been off of gluten and sugar for two months, and I feel amazing. And I finally dropped those five extra pounds that I couldn't kick, right? But I invested in me. I made, I kept that promise to me. Had this conversation with my dad, and my dad said, just eat this scone, right? I know you want the scone, and I know you want the raspberry jam on top of it because it's delicious. Yes, I love homemade raspberry jam. I do. I said, Dad, you don't understand. It's not about that. It's about keeping that promise to myself and telling me that I'm worth it. When I look at my kids, so often, right, I went through that mom guilt. I went, read through my daughter's journal when we were starting up doTERRA, and she's like, my mom's always gone. I have to do everything. She doesn't appreciate me. I work way harder than my mom does, right? Today, she's 22 years old and going after her dreams, right? Our children watch what we do. They watch us work hard and make sure we're giving them that quality of time, but also make sure that they see that you're chasing your dreams. I want to tell you a story about Sarah Murray, who took the stage today as the general manager of doTERRA for the U.S. Eight years ago, we hired her as a project manager over one of our programs. She was young. She was sassy as ever and determined to do a good job. We saw something so bright in her. But I sat down with her eight years ago and we went through her annual review and I said, Sarah, what's your career path? Where do you see yourself in five years? What do you want to accomplish? And she looked at me with determination in her eyes and she said, someday I want to be your general manager of the United States. And I kind of laughed inside just a little bit. I thought, oh, you are so cute, right? Aren't you adorable to have that high of aspirations? She has worked her guts out, understanding every bit about doTERRA, how our systems work, what our products do, how all of you operate and think and feel. She knows more about the company than we as owners do. She got her MBA while being pregnant with her second child and working a full-time job at doTERRA. So today, I will tell you that there is power in what we think and what we see in that vision that we cast out. Because her dream of becoming the general manager of the U.S. for doTERRA has come true. She's there, right? A couple of months ago, we sat together as a sales and marketing team. And we were talking about this convention and the dream theme and what we would prepare for all of you. And as we were talking about it, we had um, the suggestion of, of using one of the other um, smaller actors of Greatest Showman to come and perform for you at this convention. And as we cast that out, um, the response came back that, yes, they would do it, but they would only perform in one venue and not two. But no, that won't work. And so it was actually Shelly, who was the director of events, said, Emily, I'm just throwing this out there. This might be crazy, but you ever thought about Hugh Jackman? And it was so crazy that it was like, <laughs> I said, but wait. Yes. Yes. Let's do this. Let's bring Hugh Jackman to convention, right? So, I didn't even tell my business partners about this crazy idea. Because Corey Lindley already calls me the dreamer. Darn right I am. I am a dreamer. And I will continue to be a dreamer. 
So we put it out there. Little did we know that he and his wife, Deb, loved doTERRA, right? And as I was talking to him last night, he's like, Emily, I don't travel on weekends. I mean, he had to be back. He flew in yesterday. He flew out today at 5 o'clock. He has an interview for Front Runner the day he gets home, and he starts filming his next movie on October 2nd. His schedule is crazy. He had to get permission from the, from the uh, executive producer to be able to come here because he's supposed to be sitting in a hotel room ready to roll. When the answer came back, yes. And I went and took this to my business partners and said, okay, I have a big ask, a really big ask. But this is 10 years and our wellness advocates deserve this. What do you think? And they said, yes, right? The power of belief is amazing, right? I was sitting in the back room talking to Hugh last night about the power of manifestation. I said, Hugh, I manifested you here. And he's like, I felt it. I couldn't deny it when the request came in. I had to say yes, right? Miracles happen to those who believe in them, right? Are you believing in those miracles in your life? Cast out doubt. Bring faith into your life and know that you deserve it, that you are worthy of it, and do good things with those miracles. So real quickly, I look at the seven steps to accomplishing dreams. These are some of the things that, um, that I've kind of used in my life. And you can determine what works best in your life. But number one, first you have to dream it, right? And dream it so big that it scares you. Because if it doesn't scare you, right, as my heart was pounding when I called Dave Sterling for that first time, right? I was terrified. We were terrified when we had our first meetings. People didn't show up. We had to keep going and going and going and believing in the beauty of that dream. And it happened, right? Hugh Jackman, man, that was a scary one, right? We put a big dream out there and it happened. Cast those dreams. Number two, you have to believe that it will happen. You have to see yourself as if it has already happened. Just as Gina talked about and Hugh Jackman talked about today, you've got to taste it, you've got to smell it, you've got to breathe it in. What does it feel like? See it, visualize it. Number three, you've got to tell somebody about it. You can't keep this dream to yourself. People might laugh. It doesn't matter. Scream it from the rooftops. You tell people, right? I am. I am going to do this, and this is what it looks like. Talk about it all the time. Put it. We just wrote your dream with the heart around it. You're going to take that out of your notebook when you get home, and you're going to post it on your mirror in your bathroom, a place that you can see it every single day. And you're going to visualize that until that dream comes true. And when it does, you're going to cast out a bigger dream. Number four, you've got to put forth the work, right? We started doTERRA. It wasn't, oh, yeah, we're going to create this. We're going to go out and find the most pure, potent essential oils anywhere. It's going to be awesome. No, we had to work our guts out. We still are. And we won't stop. There is a force behind us. We recognize that and we will not be stopped. It took five months for me to find those first five oils. Five months. I wondered, are we on the right track? Is this really what we're supposed to do? But we didn't give up. Number five, surround yourself with believers and doers. Today, you're surrounded by believers and doers all around you, right? You feel this? But guess what? When you go home, most likely you're going to be surrounded by skeptics and people that poo-poo your dream and tell you that you're crazy and make you feel like you shouldn't have that dream. Don't listen to them. Surround yourself with builder, believers and doers and build your tribe, right? Number six, 
know you are worthy and capable and deserving of your dream. You know, there's a, a song in Greatest Showman called This Is Me. And in that song, it talks about being bruised, about the scars that we all carry with us. We all have scars. We've all done things that we regret. So what? That's not who we are today, right? We have the opportunity each and every day to become the very best versions of ourselves, don't we? Do that. Know that you're deserving of it. And number seven, be generous, always. Open up your heart. Give your time, give your love, give of your resources, and breathe belief into others. Sometimes the heart sees what is invisible to the eye. We had this dream that became doTERRA that was in our heart. It seemed so far away. We wondered, is it really possible? But we couldn't deny what lived in our heart, what continues to live in our heart. We're not done. We're just getting started. Each and every one of you have felt something this week. You've been moved. There is a stirring in your heart, something that is pushing you forward. Remember this feeling. Keep it written in your heart because you were created for a magnificent purpose. You weren't created to be mediocre. You weren't created to live within a box of what society tells us our life should look like. You were created to have your souls on fire, right? So live out your purpose, live your calling. You know what's true to you and open yourself up to imagine the possibilities in this world. Thank you so much for being with us today. My partners and I all wanna say thank you. We love you from the depths of our heart. And we have one last close for you today, but we love you so much. Have an amazing year. Bye-bye.